What's up y'all? We've got hunting seasons coming in all around the country. With that being said, from antelope to elk, which broadhead should you shoot? I'm going to tell you in this video, I'm going to give you the three ways that I select what broadhead is going to be in my quiver for what game I'm going to be hunting. Let's jump on into it. All right, guys, so like I said, I've got three criteria that I like to stick to just to simplify things when I'm trying to decide what broadhead to put in my quiver. There's thousands of broadheads out there, guys, and it sometimes can feel daunting when you're trying to decide which broadhead to shoot. Uh, a lot of the stuff that you see on YouTube and just in the hunting space in general really pushes people one direction or the other, and most of the time it's one extreme to the other. There's not a whole lot in between. A lot of times it'll either be single bevel, cut on contact, small fixed blade, or you have the other rule of thumb guys that say, well, if I make a bad shot, I would rather have a huge cut. So then they lean towards two or three blade, inch and three quarter to two inch cut mechanicals. Where's the in-between there? And the biggest thing for me how I'd really start the process of deciding which broadhead I'm going to shoot is going to be setup. First and foremost, setup is going to be number one. Let's crunch some numbers here just so I can kind of give you an idea of what I'm trying to say on setup. So this is just a chart that I pulled off the internet. The, I've seen several now that are given roughly the same numbers. Uh, kinetic energy mo that are, is recommended or required for elk, 42 to 65 foot-pounds in kinetic energy. Let's bring that all the way down to deer and antelope, which really most for most hunters in the U.S. is going to be uh, that deer and antelope size animal all the way to up to elk is really where people have a, a hard time figuring out which broadhead they want to shoot. So let's just say for antelope or deer, they're recommending 25 to 41 foot pounds of kinetic energy. So we got a, a gap there from 25 all the way up to 65 on the recommendation for the top end for elk. So from there, let's go ahead and crunch some numbers. I've got a calculator here and I will link this calculator link below. It's pretty accurate. Um, I'm just bumping the numbers off of my lift uh, that I got versus what this chart is telling me um, let's bump it up to what i'm shooting currently my current setup is 27 inch draw 76 pounds uh, 430 grain arrow um, and it asks you to plug in your ibo this right here says i'm shooting 295 I'm, in reality, I'm shooting 290, so let me bump down the speed just a little bit until it adds up to 290 because that's actually what I'm shooting. So at 290 feet a second, this chart here is saying that I'm shooting 80.28 foot-pounds of kinetic energy. With that being said, that is a ton of kinetic energy when the chart that I just referenced says 65 is the recommended upper end requirement for elk. Elk are a big animal, guys. Uh, and there should be some thought put into selecting your broadhead. I think even more so than selecting your arrow setup, your broadhead is more important in my opinion. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually run this chart down until these numbers add up to arrow kinetic energy, uh, bringing it all the way down and kind of reference, give you some numbers of reference. So, uh, 27 inch draw, let's drop it down to, let's just say, um let's go leave it at 27 inch draw but let's bring it down to 70 pounds 70 pounds is a pretty common weight for most people to shoot 
according to this chart at 70 pounds my bow should be shooting roughly 280 and i'm sitting at 74.84 foot pounds of kinetic energy still plenty of energy for an elk let's drop it down to 60 pounds 60 pounds 263 feet a second according to this chart and i'm at 66.03 foot pounds of kinetic energy let's drop it down even more let's go 55 pounds so at 55 pounds, I'm finally down under that 65, which is the high, the upper rec recommended range for elk at 62 pounds of kinetic energy. Now, where I'm going with this, most of the guys that you hear talking about the setups that's required for elk talk about, you know, you need to be shooting as much weight, weight as possible. I agree with that to a point. Uh, you don't have to shoot 80 pounds for an elk and you don't have to be shooting a 800 or 700 grain arrow for elk. This is all based off a 430 grain arrow. So what I'm doing with this, this is a really good chart and I think it's a really good way to help you select, um, your bow setup and figure out roughly what the kinetic energy is that's coming out of your bow and helping you make a decision on your broadheads. Now, one thing I will say, I've looked up some, some reference info um, as far as recommended kinetic energy on deer for a expandable broadhead. Now, like we said, let's go back to the chart. For deer, this chart recommends 25 to 41 foot pounds. With that being said, that is with a sharp fixed blade broadhead. If it's me, just based on the research that I've done, as well as the penetration that I've seen on deer sized animals with an expandable broadheads, I would recommend if you're going to shoot any less than 60 foot pounds of kinetic energy, you probably need, and you want to shoot a, a mechanical. If you want to shoot a mechanical, I would say the absolute lowest I would go would be 50 foot pounds. But at 50 foot pounds, I would recommend shooting something small. Something like a Sever 1.5 would be a good option. Something really small, something that's going to be very accurate, but it's going to give you the penetration where you get two holes, an entry and an exit. Now, with that being said, don't expect a huge blood trail, but if you do want to shoot an expandable, I would recommend shooting something like the Sever 1.5 or another good option would be the G5 Dead Meats, which is an inch and a half cut three blade. That's another good option. But I would stick with something small like that for anything 50 foot pounds to 60 foot pounds. Once you hit 60 foot pounds, guys, you can really um, go a little bit bigger, especially on a deer sized animal. This is specifically deer size and smaller. If you go up to 60 foot pounds, you can shoot something like more of a two inch uh, two blade or a two inch ish three blade or something like that. You can go to a little bit bigger. Um, now, Let's go ahead and see what this chart does. So to get down to 50 foot pounds of kinetic energy, let's go ahead where this is most of the time going to affect people is somebody with a shorter draw length. Say it's a woman, say they got a 25 inch draw length, which is pretty feasible for a lot of people. And say at 25, say they're shooting a lift at 25 inches, just, just to keep it simple. Um, most of the time they're going to, or oftentimes it's going to be anywhere from 40 to 50 foot, uh, 50 pounds on the draw weight. Let's go to 50 pounds on the draw weight, 430 grain arrow says this arrow speed should be around 226. It's going to be super slow. You definitely want to keep your yardages short, but we're still at 48.76 foot pounds of kinetic energy. With a setup like that, I would definitely recommend shooting a fixed blade. Let's bump it up to where we hit that 50 foot pound minimum mark that I recommended for a expandable 50.5 foot pounds. That is with a 25 inch draw at 52 pounds. That's a very feasible setup for a lot of people. Now, even with a setup like that, I would keep it probably 30 yards and in on a deer size animal. So number one criteria, like I said, I'll link these charts in the description below. Number one criteria for selecting your broadhead is going to be your setup. What's your draw length? What's your draw weight? What arrow setup are you shooting as far as your grains on your arrow? Like I said, this chart will be really helpful for um, plugging in those numbers to help you get a simulated rough estimate kinetic energy on your setup. 
So number two on my list of how I select a broadhead, and equally as important as the first, maybe not quite as important, is going to be the game species in which you are going after. We've just talked about pretty much everything from antelope to elk. Um, that's where my main experience has been. I haven't shot anything bigger than an elk, and I haven't shot really anything. And I've shot turkeys, but with turkeys, I just like to shoot. I'm not going to lie. I like to shoot as big of an expandable as I can if I'm shooting my compound. If I'm shooting my longbow, I don't really change broadheads for turkeys. That's just me. Um, but with game, what are you hunting? Are you hunting something small like an antelope or a deer? Are you hunting something, even though it's a deer, are you hunting a 160 pound deer from North Carolina? Or are you hunting a 260 pound deer from Kansas? There's a big difference between the two. Are you shooting 90 pound does or are you shooting 260 pound mature whitetails? Huge difference. Uh, or are you shooting an elk size animal? Are you shooting a black bear? Each species has something that they require for uh, a better option of broadhead. Let's just say antelope. You're shooting, you're hunting antelope. My recommendation is gonna be big expandable broadhead lighter arrow setup because the the animal's not that big it's not that durable uh you're gonna get pretty good penetration so i would shoot a big expandable lighter arrow setup for that animal you know you're gonna be most of the time shooting in open country so you're gonna possibly have longer shots um i wouldn't go extremely light there's a lot of people that do but i would stay around what you're used to on um whatever your hunting setup is but I would definitely shoot something big. My recommendation, just based on what I like, it would either be a three blade um, G5 Mega Meat, or I would probably say something like a G5 T2, two inch uh, two blade, or a Sever two inch. Those would probably be my three recommendations on a uh, antelope. Another option, which I don't have a whole lot of uh, experience in, would be something like a uh, four blade, like a, a hybrid. Um, that may be a good option. They make big cut hybrid broadheads, um, but I kind of prefer to either stay with a fixed or a mechanical. I don't really blend the two. Um, now let's take that to an extreme of, say, a 260 pound whitetail. A big deer in Kansas has a lot more bone mass than, say, the deer here in North Carolina. So if I'm going to Kansas to hunt whitetails tomorrow, the two things that are going to be in my quiver are going to be the Q80 Exodus, 125 grain, or the G5, which this one, blades popped out. That's one downside to a expandable broadhead. Blades tend to pop out sometimes. Um, it's either going to be a Q80 Exodus 125 or it's going to be a G5 Mega Meat uh, 125. Now, the reason behind that is deer, especially big mature whitetails, are heavy boned animals, but it is still a deer. Now, I prefer fixed blades generally over expandables. Now, where I will say if I am in a situation where my shots are up close, um, I'm probably going to shoot the expandable. I tune my bow where I have both options in my quiver, but in a situation where I'm in tight, maybe 40 yards and less for sure shots, I'm going to that three blade mechanical. Last year kind of changed my mind. I actually witnessed, I made a bad shot on a Kentucky deer. And that broadhead saved me. That's the only reason I found that animal, because it is a big cut. On a deer size animal, especially if you're shooting a setup like mine where you've got, you've got 80, or 80 pounds of kinetic energy, that arrow is going to go through that animal unless you just hit center and bone of that a thick shoulder knuckle or something like that. And there's an argument in those cases that even with a good fixed blade, you're probably not going to make it through that. You're probably going to snap your arrow off, maybe get a slight bit of penetration, but probably not going to find that animal. Let's take that from there and go to elk. I gave you the numbers off the chart for what people recommend for kinetic energy requirements for elk. What I'm going to tell you there is use your best judgment. I'm not going to tell you not to shoot an expandable broadhead. My preference 
what I prefer, what I have experience with. If I'm going elk hunting tomorrow, I'm going to have a Q80 Exodus 125, same arrow set up for deer. I'm also going to be packing something like a Sever, maybe their 1.5 hybrid, or probably something like a T2, um, a two blade, just a standard two blade, two inch cut. I'll carry those in my quiver as well. One for follow-up shots and two, if I get out there and for whatever reason my bow has gotten out of whack and I can't get it to tune with my fixed blades, I still have an option as a backup. Like I said, my preference for elk is always going to be a fixed blade broadhead. I prefer a three blade fixed blade, but that's just me. A lot of guys prefer something like a single bevel or a double bevel, um, small cutting fixed blade. In my personal experience, they don't get a whole lot of penetration. I'm sorry. They don't get a whole lot of blood trail. They get tremendous penetration. Although there's arguments and there's tests out there that the Q80 Exodus three blade gets better penetration than a lot of your single bevel and double bevel $100 plus broadheads at like $50 a box. So that's just something to keep in mind. So if you get my drift, you realize your game species that you're going after can cause vast differences in what broadhead I would recommend you shoot. Last is gonna be location. Location tends to kind of go with game species, but deer in, like I said, North Carolina are not the same size deer as deer in Kansas or Canada or Iowa or Illinois. They're just not the same. So location kind of goes along with species. If you're going to the Rocky Mountains, you might be hunting elk. You could be hunting mule deer. You could be hunting whitetails. But most often, the guys that are going to travel from down from out east, like I am here in North Carolina, they're going to be going out west to hunt elk a lot of, often, more often than not. Um, in that situation, you got to keep in mind that you may have hundred yard shots if you're capable of making that shot. By all means, you do you. Um, I'm not telling you to shoot a deer, an animal at hundred yards, but you have longer distance shots. You have a constant wind. Almost every time I've been out west elk hunting, there has been a consistent wind one way or another. It's, it's been windy. Um, and then it could be thick. Maybe you're going to, um, you're hunting in a pine thicket somewhere here in the east, you know, and you can't shoot very far. Location plays a big factor, in my opinion, on the broadhead you should shoot. So let's do a quick recap. Number one, most important, what is your setup? You long draw guys, I'm envious of you because you have a lot more options out there for pretty much any game species, whichever broadhead you want to shoot because of your draw length, because of the options that you have available, the kinetic energy that you can, that you can put out there because of the speeds that you can shoot. Number two, and equally as important, is game species. Which game species are you hunting? So one animal that I didn't talk about uh, earlier would be a black bear. Here in the east, we have a lot of black bears, a lot of opportunities to hunt black bears. I've never personally shot one, but I've got some buddies that have, and I'll give you an experience that a couple of them have had. Both that I'm talking about have been shooting a two blade, big expandable, and cannot find blood because the black bear's hair is so thick that it mats up. They got a thick layer of fat. They mat the hole, the holes mat up and it kind of plugs the holes. The hair kind of sops up the blood. If I'm shooting at a bear, even though it's not a big animal, it's not a really heavy mast animal as far as bone, the hair is so thick, I would prefer to shoot a three blade expandable over a two blade because you're actually getting a, a hole whether that's a round hole or whether it's a triangular hole like I would get out of my Q80 Exodus, it's still a hole and not a slit. And I think that's where those guys kind of messed up on those animals. So second, game species. Now third, location. Like I said, location tends to go along with game species, but it's still something to keep in mind, a little bit more criteria to keep in mind when you got the wind, long distance versus in tight shots. There's a lot more options there. This is not a hard and fast rule, guys, but this is the three ways in which I select the broadhead. And if you've noticed, it's pretty much the same couple broadheads for me, but there are some differences in different situations where I'll use one over the other. So 
to keep on with the uh, Bible verses to end this video, today's Bible verse also is going to come out of Isaiah, and this is Isaiah 40, 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. You can do anything as long as you got the Lord on your side, guys. Keep that in mind, whatever situation you're going through. Know that going to him, if it's his will, whatever situation you're in, you'll come out of it better on the other side. So thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you got something out of it. If you're in the market for some broadheads, go up to Grafton Archery, give them a call. Check out the broadheads that they have up, uh, available up there. And like I always say, remember to live your life to the fullest. Use your passions to bless others. Please like and subscribe. Comment down below what your setup is this year. Appreciate you watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.